Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about Chi Square Test. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So before defining Chi Square Test, we will see an example first. Let's see the example. Suppose a survey was conducted on some students in 2021 and determined that 60% of students failed in one subject, 28% failed in two subjects and 12% failed in three or more subjects. Now you are not convinced by this data. So you have decided to conduct your own survey and you have collected the data. According to your data, 73 students failed in one subject, 38 students failed in two subjects and 18 students failed in three or more subjects. So you have chosen total 129 students. So these values are your observed values, right? So your work is to determine whether the previous survey report supports your study or not. So in order to do so, you have to perform a statistical test that is nothing but a chi-square test. Now, let's define chi-square test. A chi-square test basically determines whether there is a significant difference between the observed value and expected value in a random data set. In other words, we can say that the chi-square test is used to estimate whether to accept or reject null hypothesis. So we have studied null and alternative hypothesis in our previous lecture. If you want the link, I'm putting it in the description box. So briefly, if there is no difference between expected and observed value, null hypothesis should be accepted because nothing is happening. And if there is a significant difference between expected and observed value, null hypothesis should be rejected because something is happening and alternative hypothesis should be accepted. The chi-square test is represented by chi-square. This test was explained by Carl Pearson in 1900. Hence, this test is also referred as Pearson's chi-square test. The formula for chi-square can be written as chi-square is equal to summation of observed value minus expected value whole square divided by the expected value. Let's solve our problem now. Let's state the null and alternative hypothesis first. Null hypothesis, the percentage of students failed in one, two, three or more subject is 60%, 28%, 12% respectively. That means we are agree with the expected values.
alternative hypothesis the percentage of students fail in 1 2 3 or more subjects does not match the previous survey that means there must be some differences between expected and observed values so we will tabulate our data here this column contains observed values which we have found this column contains expected values according to previous survey we know that 60% students failed in one subject so 60% of 129 students is 77.4 28% students failed in two subjects so 28% of 129 students is 36.1 12% students failed in three subjects or more so 12% of 129 students is 15.5 now we have to subtract expected value from the observed value for each data so 73 minus 77.4 is equal to minus 4.4 38 minus 36.1 is equal to 1.9 18 minus 15.5 is equal to 2.5 now in this column we will just make the square so minus 4.4 whole square is equal to 19.36 1.9 whole square is equal to 3.61 2.5 whole square is equal to 6.25 in this column we will divide these value by the expected value 19.36 by 77.4 is equal to 0.25 3.61 by 36.1 is equal to 0.1 6.25 divided by 15.5 is equal to 0.4 now we will add these values so we will get 0.75 So if we add 0.25 plus 0.1 plus 0.4 we will get 0.75 that is the chi square value next the p value or the probability value will tell us how to conclude so if chi square less than or is equal to the p value the null hypothesis should be accepted if chi square is more than p value the null hypothesis should be rejected so we know the chi square value now we have to compare it with the p value so to do that first we have to know degrees of freedom bf that is called df so df or degrees of freedom is just the number of categories minus 1 therefore for the above example degrees of freedom is equal to 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 since we have three categories here students fail in one subject is the first category students fail in two subjects is the second category students fail in three or more subjects is the third category 
So the degree of freedom is 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. Now let's check p value at degrees of freedom 2. So here we have a table from which we can find p value for any degrees of freedom. So if you are asked this type of question in your exam, you will be given this p value. Don't worry about that. You don't need to buy out anything here. For your understanding, I am providing this table here. So you can take the screenshot if you need to practice such questions later. So for each degrees of freedom, you will get three p values for significance level 0 0.05, 0 0.01 and 0 0.001. If the significance level is not mentioned, then consider the first one that is 0 0.05. So this is the table here. You can take the screenshot if you want. This is the full table. So in our case, degrees of freedom is 2. So the p-value is 5.99 for the significance level 0 0.05. And we have found that chi-square is equal to 0.75 that we have found here. So 0.75 is less than the p-value that is 5.99 that we have seen in the table just now. And we already know that if chi-square value is less than p-value, we have to accept the null hypothesis. That means the previous survey report supports our study since there is no difference between expected value and observed value.